So the final piece to our puzzle is about how some viruses go into a host cell, take over, but don't actually start to make viruses right away. So here's the thing. There's a group of viruses known as the retrovirus fam family, and their characteristics include the fact that they're composed of double-stranded RNA, two pieces of RNA. They also carry reverse transcriptase, okay? Now you've heard of transcriptase before. Um, transcriptase is the enzyme that helps DNA make a copy into the messenger RNA, okay? Now it's also enveloped, so you know already what that means in terms of entry. So in terms of attachment, the example of or the most common example of the retrovirus family is HIV. And HIV is one of those viruses that only requires one or two of those glycoproteins to actually bind to receptors on the host cell. It can enter a human cell very easily. Okay? So because of that attachment process. Now, the entry um, is interesting. How would you expect HIV to enter the host based upon the characteristics? If it's enveloped, hmm. So here's the thing. HIV enters the cell, okay? It does not use fusion. It uses endocytosis. So that envelope gets torn off on the inside of the cell. That means that the envelope and the glycoproteins from HIV is not left on the surface of the host cell. So once it's inside, it's inside and there is no sign that that cell is infected. So if it's made of double-stranded RNA, where do you think the target site is? Where is it trying to go to in order to replicate? Is it going to go to the ribosomes or is it going to go into the nucleus? Well, you're right. It's going to go into the nucleus. Okay, Uncoding is going to occur that double-stranded RNA is going to come out, and one of those strands of RNA is going to create a DNA section. Now, this is where the reverse transcriptase enzyme comes into play. Transcriptase, like I said, makes DNA into messenger RNA. If it's reverse transcriptase, it works backwards. It takes the RNA and creates DNA. So this is how HIV is really specific in that it goes in, it takes its envelope with it, so no glycoproteins are left on the outside, so it's hiding out, plus it does a double camouflage by inserting part of its chromosome, or I'm sorry, its genome, into the chromosome of the host cell. So this replication process is very different than what we've looked at in terms of the acute naked and the acute um, enveloped virus. So the RNA, if I'm looking at my diagram, the RNA has reverse transcriptase, go along, read it, it makes a copy of DNA. Then it makes the, the um, other strand, the complementary strand, and creates the double helix. Now it can be integrated right into the DNA. Okay. Once it's integrated into the DNA, it is in the form of what we call a provirus. So you're going to want to mark right over here, okay, provirus, where I have this nice yellow piece. Now, the reason they call it a provirus, pro typically means before. So before viruses are actually made, this is the form that the viral DNA takes. Now, this causes the cell to go into what's known as a latent state, okay? The viral DNA is not active. There are no new viruses being made. That cell will live out a normal daily life until activation occurs. Once activation occurs, the DNA becomes active again. Here's the scary part. We don't know what causes activation. We don't know if it's something in the environment or if it's something in the individual, um, or if it's a carcinogen, we have no idea. So um, the viral R or DNA becomes active. It recreates RNA. Isn't that crazy? It recreates RNA, and, and it makes one huge long protein chain called a polyprotein. That polyprotein 
gets cleaved then into smaller pieces. Part of that protein makes the capsid proteins down here. Part of it makes the envelope proteins or the spikes. Part of it makes the reverse transcriptase. Okay. Part of it, um, well, I'm not even sure why I colored that other piece red. So anyhow, <laughs> then assembly can occur. Now that still happens the same way. Okay. The nucleic acid gets inserted into the nucleocapsid. The envelope forms around the outside of the cell or the, the, I'm sorry, the capsid proteins are inserted in. Um, everything gets packaged. And then the virus is released by budding. So once the, the virus is released, it's slowly leaked into the individual. And in doing so, it is less noticeable to the immune system. Now, I know that this is kind of cut off funny down here for you, right down here, so I'm going to try and explain it. HIV mutates quickly because reverse transcriptase is such a bad proofreader. Okay, reverse transcriptase is such a bad proofreader. It's constantly changing its proteins in the capsid. Okay, um, as HIV, you figure how many errors are made here? RNA to DNA, DNA to the complementary strand. Then it has to come out of the DNA, make multiple RNA copies to form that poly protein. This is what makes it difficult for the human immune system to make antibodies to be able to fight it off. So the issue is, is one virus might go in and the viruses that come out are genetically different. This is why we've been unable to synthesize any kind of vaccine um, that, that can treat HIV, that can prevent you from getting sick from it. So kind of interesting, and hopefully that piqued your interest a little bit. Our last unit of the semester is going to be on HIV, um, and and it's it's one of my favorites. It's really interesting, so I can't wait to share it with you guys.